Uh, good. You know, today was situational. Um, a lot of third down work, a lot of red zone work. Uh, yesterday was kind of a base day like it always is. I thought yesterday our guys were, you know, you worry about sometimes get this time of year if they'll come out on a Tuesday that far away from the game and, and how into it they'll be. I thought we were really into it. You can just tell the guys had good energy, good pep in their step and really focusing on what we were trying to do. Uh, today was a good day for us. Uh, it's an important day just because the situations always matter and Ole Miss is pretty good in those situations. They're pretty good on third down defense. So it was a critical day for us. Thought we got some good work. Oh, it's huge. And, you know, he was available last weekend. He was by no means 100%. And um, just fortunate that the way the game went, we were able to get him some more rest. And, um, but he's been able to practice every day this week, and he's looking good. And so that just obviously helps solidify the depth in our backfield. Rhett, the uh, Stanton Truett, tell about that yeah. move and how, how you say what you Yeah, <clears throat> you know, we, we made it about three or four weeks ago. Um, you know, Stanton obviously had had a really good fall camp for us and was doing some good things. And just kind of the way everything was, was working. Um, he's always been kind of half a receiver, half a running back. You know, he's a real thick, stocky guy, even though he's not real tall. He's extremely explosive. Uh, he's got running back skills with the ball in his hand. So we went ahead and made that move. Um, credit to him for kind of buying into that because you're sitting there going, well, I was getting to play, and now I'm kind of having to take a step back and all that. And he's been really – he's worked really hard. I mean, he was up here early at times watching tape and just trying to learn the position, learn the system. And uh, him and Coach Horton, and uh, he did a really good job. And um, it was good to see him, you know, kind of reap those rewards with his opportunity on Saturday. And then also for us, I mean, you can see the added dimension he brings. I mean, he's got a different gear. And, uh, you know, obviously he proved he can run really in between the tackles very well. And obviously he can catch the ball because he had been a wide out. So uh, he's obviously a huge added weapon for us on offense. When it comes to your offensive line, you guys said Tuesday that you have six guys and you know Right. Yeah, definitely there's more guys, but I think what Coach was saying is, you know, we feel like there's six starters up there. I mean, we have all the faith in the world in X and just, you know, kind of the way things have been working lately, we're just kind of sticking with the unit we have. But, um, again, with five games left, we've been fortunate so far, but you just got to be ready. You're one play away from, from things changing up there. Um, the best thing is we, our guys, I feel like up front, have improved dramatically from, you know, week one to where we are now just from – uh, the physicality, the, the vertical movement we get, and just really working together. And I think that's shown the last couple of weeks. So specifically, though, is, is Mike Horton? Yeah, Mike Horton's a guy we believe in, no question. And um, he, he even plays in some of our sets. I don't know if you all have noticed that. So he's starting to get some action like we've done with some guys in the past. So, um, yeah, there's definitely more than those six. I think what Coach was alluding to is we got six guys we believe have starter ability. And then after that, there's definitely the backups that we, we, you know, we rep every week and we believe in those guys too. Is there, if, if the situation called for it, could he play guard? Or? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that – and that's some things in that off week that he repped at some too. Um, but, um, yeah, he's got the ability to do that. I saw a stat where there's been four or 500-yard rushing games in the SEC since 2000. And Tim Horton's coach, all those running backs in that, in that game. Right. What's that say about him? Well, I think it probably says there's no coincidence. Um, you know, Tim is as steady uh, of a person, of a coach, of a professional and an individual as you're going to find in this business. I mean, he's not a guy that, uh, you know, seeks a lot of praise and attention. Uh, but everywhere he's been, he's put running backs uh, in the NFL. He's had 1,000-yard rushers. And I think he does a great job developing guys, um, you know, from when they arrive to when they leave. And he just coaches a position extremely well. And I think his players really believe and they appreciate the consistency with which he coaches them. And that's the same way he is in everything. And with us as a staff on the road recruiting, I mean, Tim's just, uh, you're not going to find a better coach, a better mentor for young guys. And uh, he, takes his, he takes his craft really seriously. I, I, he's as detailed. I've learned a lot from him, just from how meticulous, how detailed, how consistent he is. He's very diligent. And I think that's why it carries over to his players' performance. You guys have had three, 400 yard rushing games right now. I don't want to make Right. In 2013. But what's that like as a play caller, as an offensive coach, when you know that the other opponent knows you're going to run the ball and you're still able to do it very consistently? Well, that's uh, it's a huge plus when you have that ability to lean on a strength like that. Um, you know, Saturday was kind of unusual. I think the last time it was like that was probably the Tennessee game in 13 that, you know, you're averaging around 10 yards a carry and there's not as much need to throw the football. That's, that's very rare. That's not going to happen again this year probably. Um, but the guys were doing a good job, you know, being physical up front. I think the real reason 
that you saw the big spike in explosive runs, you know, a lot of the credit goes to our guys on the perimeter. That was by far the best game our wideouts had blocked. And I think the biggest thing to take away from that game is you got a guy like Tony Stevens. He had zero catches. And he's smiling as happy as he's ever been on the sidelines. Marcus Davis, zero catches. Kyle Davis, zero catches. You know, uh, Darius Slayton, zero catches. They didn't care. You know, usually those guys catch balls in a game. I mean, Tony had been having a, a couple really good back-to-back -back games. But, you know, every game has its own personality and what's working. And we were rolling. But the real reason we were getting a lot of 30 and 40 and 50-yard runs and not a lot of 8, 10, and 12-yard runs was because those guys were doing a really good job being physical and manning their guys up on the perimeter. And that way, when things bounced or spit to the second level, our running backs were able to go the distance or make big plays. There were two or three throws by Sean, one at least, that could have been a pick six. Absolutely. Was he just – was he rusty for the bye week? Was he seeing something incorrectly? Was it the defense? No, I think uh, the, there's two throws I think you're alluding to. The first one was early in the game down their sideline. We were very fortunate. They played the play very well. It was kind of a unique play. It wasn't something we do. It was, it was something we did for them. And uh, they played it well. And that's, that probably goes more to me, not giving them a better out. And uh, we were fortunate that could have been a pick six. And then we had another play on a third down uh, later in the game that they just played exceptionally well. And uh, every now and then the hat goes off to them. And... Uh, he saw it at the last second and kind of threw the ball off just enough. They weren't able to pick it off. But I thought when he threw the ball, he threw it very accurately uh, other than those two positions. And like I said, one of them, I put him in a bad spot. And uh, there was probably two third downs that could have given him a better play as well. Yeah, I mean, pre-snap motion does a lot of things. Obviously, it can it can try to help you gain a look or a schematic advantage that you want. It also just gives the defense more to look at, and they have to adjust on the fly when things are going fast. And um, you know, it's something that we uh, try to do from time to time, and it, it just helps. Um, you know, obviously, when a defense can just sit and sink their heels in and know where everybody is, it's a lot easier to play defense. But when you can give them things, they got to adjust on the fly every now and then. They get out of position, and that helps you. So that's that's why we do it. You know, probably a couple things. We, we've uh, we've tried as a staff to do a better job of giving them, uh, putting them in better position. You know, and I alluded to a couple times we didn't do that on Saturday. Um, I think the other thing is we've we've kind of simplified things and played faster. And you know, I think sometimes as as coaches we can try to call the right play all the time. And you know, really we got to try to put them in the best position to be successful. But we got to call the plays and let them go play. And I think that's why our tempo has been better. There's been times we've made good plays in the looks that weren't ideal. But we're playing faster. Our guys have confidence, and we're not putting them in as many bad situations. Um, and obviously, we focused on it because that was an issue early on. So uh, I didn't know we were first or whatever, but I knew we eliminated that. I think the second thing to look at is in three of the last four games, we haven't had an offensive penalty, and that's—I don't know if I've ever been a part of that. But we had no penalties, and we finally had a clean game, even though we were fortunate on a couple with no turnovers. Um, and the penalties keep you, you know, at Mississippi State, we had two holds. We were in first and 20 twice. Well, we converted one, we didn't the other. I mean, it's hard to do that. And so we've been able to stay on schedule, not just with negative plays, but not having a lot of penalties that, you know, offset that as well. Is it a conscious effort to not substitute as much to be able to do those things too, especially at the wider two positions? Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's, there's certain things guys do better than others, and there's still times you do those things in situations. But... Again, trying to keep the same guys on the field. And again, so it may be, seem simpler, but we're able to play faster and we're able to execute at a higher level because things are simpler. It's not as, again, we're just, a lot of times as coaches, we, we try to make everything perfect. Well, very rarely is it going to show up perfect on game day. And so uh, that's probably one thing that's helped. It seems that Chandler has done a lot, been a lot more consistent blocking yeah. in the last few games. What do you think? Yeah, Chandler's been really physical. I mean, uh, he's been the, the the last two games, Mississippi State and Arkansas. He's played extremely physical. That's the guy that you know we recruited in high school. I mean, he just he loves the game, man. And you know, it's no no shocker that he starts playing better now. He starts getting a few balls and um, and all that kind of stuff. So, but I thought Mississippi State was kind of his biggest improvement game, and then he just carried that over through the bye week and. Uh, again, when that position's playing well and productive, even if they're not catching a lot of balls, but he's being productive at his position. Well, he's had. I mean, he's a true freshman. I think you've seen he's got a lot of ability. He's done a really good job. Uh, the last two games caught the big pass at Mississippi State, did some good things the other night. Um, you know, obviously uh, Cameron Petway and, uh, and carry on our, our starters. And so those are the, the guys that we're going to lean on. But, you know, having uh, 
Cameron come along and do what he's doing gives you a lot of confidence, especially with Malik out. And then uh, him and Stanton are both change of pace guys that complement those other two very well. And so we just got to try to continue to find ways to have them involved. Uh, but it also just gives us confidence that if we continue to have an injury here or there, that he can help us win. Yeah, well, I mean, his confidence is really high. But, you know, Eli's a guy that's really been trending, in our eyes, real positive ever since the Monroe week. And we specifically had him in more against Monroe. He did some things in that game uh, and had a few catches and had a few carries and th such. And I thought he was just kind of like everything just kind of slowed down for him somewhere around week, you know, four or five. And um, every freshman's different, like we've said before. And he's peaking at the right time for us. Um, he didn't do as much at Mississippi State. That wasn't necessarily by design. It's just the way the game went. Obviously, last week was kind of his coming out party. And I'm surprised James hadn't asked. We scored on the first drive, actually the first play. We did that for him because I know last time I got the question of when are you going to score on your, your opening drive. So we just went ahead and did it on the first play and got that out of the way. Yeah, I thought about that actually during the game, right when he scored. I said, well, that was, well, that was checked off. He doesn't remind me of anybody I've actually coached. Um, Jerome Bettis is probably good. I'm sure he went there because of the number. Um, actually, no, it's he's big. Someone's got to be old school and go Christian Okoye or something from, you know, the Chiefs back in the day. Uh, you know, if you're talking about Auburn, we've had guys like, you know, Rudy Johnson and Brandon Jacobs and those kind of guys. I mean, the, the thing that's incredible about, about Petway is, you know, when he gets to second level, people are kind of getting out of the way. As, as, some, as Coach Han likes to say, people are making business decisions. Uh, when he gets to the second level because that's why you see everybody trying to tackle him low. But he's able to go downhill north-south and be a one-cut runner. And, I mean, he, he just – he goes north-south at such a rate that is unusual for big guys. He's got good, quick, shifty feet. He can go north-south and he makes one cut. He doesn't dance around. And, and then because of that, he's able to run through a lot of arm tackles as well. Yeah, just uh, what you see on all this defense, obviously number-wise, they give up on rushing. Right. This is a group that's – very familiar with you guys, too. How yeah. much does that play into it? Well, like I said, they've been pretty good on third downs. Uh, they have had a couple games, you know, in the in the running category where they've they've given up some big plays, and that's really the reason I think it's skewed that way. Um, they're a lot different than, say, Arkansas and Mississippi State. Uh, they're very athletic. They're not quite as big on the up front, but they're very athletic. They rush the passer better than both those teams. Uh, they move a lot, and uh, I think that allows those guys to uh, to make plays. And so, and then just from a scheme standpoint, they do a little bit more. They're, they, they're more of a blitzing, more of aggressive defense. And um, so, you know, every now and then when you're that way, you give up a few big plays, but you also make some big plays. So um, it's a little different than the last two weeks for us. We have to be able to, um, you know, to execute at a high level and get hats on hats so we don't have negative plays. I'd say that's a fair assessment because there was times in fall camp that he was working with tailbacks instead of the fundamental aspects of his position. And so that's probably um, not a coincidence that when he kind of was able to hone back in on one position, he started improving and playing better. All right. Brett, who's 98 in your big package? Who's 98? Oh, the new 98. Yeah. It's Tucker Brown. Yeah. 